Hi, I'm Fatima and I'm going to present Shredder, which is a method for training noise distributions that protect privacy of systems deploying deep learning models. This is a joint work with Kazem Taram, Prakash Ramrakhiani, Ali Jalali, Dean Tolson, and Hadi Esmail Zadeh. Deep learning is deployed everywhere these days, from cars to handheld devices, smart homes, and hospitals. To receive services from online service providers, we send our personal information to the cloud when inference task is executed on them and the result is returned to us. The data that we send is in raw format, which contains much more information than what is actually required for the inference service. In many cases, this data is sensitive, such as patient history, genetic data, and data from voice assistants and security cameras. Efforts to preserve privacy go at least as far back as putting doors on our homes and curtains on our windows. The major theoretical works on anonymization and rigorous privacy guarantees, such as differential privacy, go back to the 2000s. These works are mostly on data aggregation privacy. They emphasize how to gather information from data contributors and form data sets. There are over 5,000 works in this subject. With the advances of machine learning and deep learning, the privacy of learning mechanisms is becoming more relevant. The major works on deep learning privacy came out in 2015 and 16. These works focus on making DNN training private and making the extraction of private data from trained models more difficult. There are so far over 900 papers on this area. Currently, with the deployment of deep neural networks all around us, DNN inference privacy has been gaining attention. Given how we use deployed models such as voice assistants or camera face apps, it is important to make sure that the data we send to these service providers is not misused. There are overall around only 20 papers on this subject, and there is lots of room for improvement. Apart from the scientific research on privacy, international regulations are also moving fast to keep up with the technological advances. In 2018, the European Union set the General Data Protection Regulation, and more recently, starting January 2020, the state of California has set similar regulations named the California Consumer Privacy Act for entities using the data of its residents. As mentioned, inference privacy is concerned with the privacy of users of deployed inference services where the service provider is only supposed to answer an inference query and not train a model. For example, when you call your voice assistant and ask it what the weather is like today, it receives so much more information than your inference query of the weather. It can understand how many people there are with you, what their genders are, or what they're even talking about. Or let's say you take an image with your smartphone and want to run face detection on it. The service provider for face detection will have access to your raw image, which includes the background and objects surrounding you. This can give away information about your location, the time of the day, and also the activities that you were engaged in. Conceptually, if we want to achieve higher privacy on a pre-trained model using naive noise addition, we would incur huge amounts of loss in the utility of the model in order to achieve meaningful privacy. Another way of achieving privacy for inference is homomorphic encryption, which is extremely compute intensive and can be over 10 times slower than conventional execution models. We consider this three-dimensional trade-off space and propose Shredder, which learns noise distributions that are tolerated by the network and do not harm accuracy, while decreasing the amount of excessive information in the input. Shredder incurs negligible overhead to the execution of the neural network. The key idea of Shredder is to use an end-to-end -end gradient-based approach to learn the noise distributions. When you normally train a neural network, you calculate the gradients of the output with respect to the weights and then update the weights using backpropagation and the chain rule. Here, we inject noise in the neural network, we freeze the network, and then we calculate the gradients with respect to the noise and update the noise parameters. This approach allows us to optimize the noise for any objective function. It is non-intrusive to the model, which is important when companies don't want to change their already deployed models and retrain them from scratch, and can learn optimized additive noise for any layer, even the input. Our execution model consists of splitting the neural network into two parts 
and executing the first part on the edge device and the second more compute intensive part on the cloud. To increase the privacy of the edge device, we add our randomly generated noise to the output of the edge partition, which obfuscates the excessive information while maintaining the accuracy. Now, how do we find these noise distributions? During an offline noise distribution training phase, first a pre-trained neural, ne neural network is partitioned into two parts by optimizing for computation and communication costs while considering the resource constraints of the edge device. Then the noise tensor is initialized by drawing samples from a Laplace distribution with mean of zero. This noise tensor is added to the intermediate activations generated from executing the first neural network part on a batch of input training images. The noise activations are then fed to the second neural network partition to generate the network's final output, the logits. The logits are the probabilities that the network assigns to each class for each input during classification. At this point, the validation accuracy is compared to a given desired one. If the desired accuracy is reached, we fit the noise tensor to Laplace distribution and save the parameters of this distribution and the order of the noise tensor elements in the form of a tuple. We add these saved distribution tuples to a collection of distributions and then we start training a new noise tensor. Once we have enough distributions, we stop the training. However, if at step 5 we did not reach the desired accuracy, we calculate the loss using our loss function and then do back propagation and update the noise tensor. Then we jump to step 3 and start another forward pass. Our loss function that was mentioned in the previous slide has two main terms. The first one is the conventional cross entropy loss and is there to maintain the classification accuracy of the main inference task. Cross entropy loss is used for classification tasks. It iterates over all possible classes and checks if the input observation O belongs to the class C using indicator variable Y of OC. If it does, then the probability that the neural network predicts the class C should increase. So the negative of the log of this probability is added to the loss function. If it doesn't belong to class C, then the indicator is simply zero and nothing happens. We added the second term to the loss function to increase the amount of noise and decrease information to preserve the privacy. We try to do so through minimizing the signal to noise ratio by maximizing the standard deviation of the noise. Alpha is a knob which helps us achieve a desirable trade-off between accuracy and privacy. In the second term, the inverse standard deviation of the noise tensor can be estimated using the summation of the noise element's magnitude for simplicity. Schroeder's loss function reflects that it does not need to know what sensitive information it is in the input is supposed to protect. It only needs to know the main inference task and it tries to obfuscate any information unrelated to that task. However, if there are private labels provided for a sensitive task, Shredder can use them to improve itself and protect that particular task. For example, we can assume an inference service which is supposed to run gender recognition on input images. The gender detection is the main inference task and the, ac the accuracy of which the first term of the loss function maintains. Now let's assume we are given an extra set of labels that indicate the identity of the people in the images. Schroeder can add an extra cross entropy term to its loss function, which helps decrease the accuracy of the given private tasks. In our example, the private task is the identification of the people in those images. Once the training has finished and the collection of noise distributions is gathered, we can run inference on a deployed system. First, we randomly choose a distribution and a saved order tuple from the collection. We then draw samples from the distribution and populate the noise tensor. We rearrange the tensor elements to match the saved order. We then apply the noise tensor by adding it to the intermediate activations which are generated from the first partition of the neural network that is deployed on the edge device. The noisy activations are then sent from the edge device to the cloud and the cloud executes the rest of the neural network and returns the result. In the rest of the presentation, we will focus on the evaluations and results. Here you can see the list of evaluations that we have. 
We have a theoretical proof which we will not cover during the presentation but you can find in the paper. We will discuss most of the empirical results here and for additional benchmark data sets and detailed numbers you can go to the paper. For our experimentations we use an NVIDIA Jetson TX2 board which is equipped with a Tegra GPU and uh, as our edge device and we used a server with Intel Core i9 CPUs and the Titan XP GPU as our cloud. We executed our end-to-end -end experiments using PyTorch. We tested Shredder on a variety of benchmark datasets and deep neural networks. Our datasets are MNIST, which is used for training digit recognition models, SciFAR, which has 10 classes of objects and animals, SVHN, a dataset of street view house numbers, ImageNet, one of the largest datasets for vision tasks with a thousand classes, VGG Face, which has a dataset of celebrity faces, and finally, 20 news groups, which is a dataset of news text classified in 20 topics. You can also see the suggested partitioning layers for our experiments in here. First, we'll see an overview of our results. In order to show the amount of privacy, we use mutual information between the transferred noisy intermediate activation and the input image. We compare this mutual information to the mutual information between the original intermediate activations and the sent image. We found that across benchmarks, we lose 74% mutual information in average, while losing less than 2% accuracy. You might wonder what this information reduction actually means. Here you can see an image representation generated with Shredder. This is a picture of someone's face. Can you guess the gender of the person in the image? Can you see their facial expression? Is this person smiling or not? Here, Shredder has trained noise distributions that keep the accuracy of the smile detection while trying to get rid of any excessive information. If you pay attention, you can see that the features related to the smile are more visible, while other features such as hair, background, ears, and the skin are all obfuscated. The neural network which this noisy representation was fed to could successfully detect the smile. Now let's take a closer look at the accuracy privacy trade-off. In these figures, the zero leakage line depicts the number of bits of information that need to be lost so that there is no information leaked. Shredder tries to get as close to this line as possible by losing little accuracy. We should remember that we can never reach this line and have acceptable accuracy since for the inference task to be able to operate correctly, some information does need to be sent to the cloud. The knee of the curve is usually the desired region where the utility and information loss are both high. Our experiments show that the neural network partitioning scheme can cause 1.79x speedup in average compared to conventional execution. The reason for this speedup is that in most cases, the communication overheads of sending the raw image outweigh the processing time. Therefore, it takes less time to do some computation on the edge and then send an intermediate activation which is usually much smaller than the raw image across the network. As mentioned in the first slide, Shredder can be applied to any partitioning point and we have let the resource constraints of the edge device take the decision of choosing the partitioning point. Generally, deeper cuts are better for privacy since the neural network operations themselves create an abstract representation of the input. These representations have less information than the raw input data. However, the difference is not huge. As the graph shows, after the second layer for VGG16, any cutting point can achieve acceptable loss in mutual information and privacy, and it's only the first couple of layers that have lower privacy. Even in those layers, the mutual information loss is still above 50%. Here we will compare Shredder to a related work, Deep Private Feature Extraction, which we will call DPFE. The setting for this experiment is similar to our example from before. Here, we define the primary task to be gender classification and the private task to be identity classification and compare Shredder to DPFE using two metrics. The first is the misclassification rate of the private label, which we see in the slide. We tested two variations of Shredder here, 
One, the conventional shredder, which we assume has no access to the private labels and is thus unaware of what it is supposed to protect against, and also a variant of shredder that has access to the private labels. DPFE has only one variant, which does require access to the private labels and is also intrusive to the model. In other words, DPFE would not operate if there are no private tasks defined, and it needs to retrain the entire model. This graph shows that for higher accuracy levels of the primary task, Shredder outperforms DPFE in terms of misclassification rate. For lower ones, however, DPFE outperforms Shredder modestly, and this is because DPFE has more trainable parameters and more power on the model when it is given a higher margin of error. In this slide, we compare DPFE and Shredder in terms of mutual information loss. Both variants of Shredder outperform DPFE, and the conventional Shredder does best, which is due to the loss functions. DPFE and Shredder with private label try to reduce information in a given direction and therefore have a narrower focus. The conventional Shredder, however, loses as much information as it can in all directions, which causes more loss of information in general. Given the recent advances in deep learning algorithms and the deployment of deep neural networks in devices and services around us, the privacy of inference systems is an important emerging concern. In this work, we propose Shredder, which is a discipline noise injection mechanism that considers the mathematical functionality of the DNNs to preserve utility and privacy with negligible overhead. Shredder is just an initial step in this direction and there is a long way to walk. Thanks for listening to my talk.